it was kind of natural for me to consider when I what I'm wearing when I go out, or especially when I visit, I don't know, certain neighborhoods where police are more likely to just profile me or look at me a certain way. And I was like, huh, I probably shouldn't wear a tank top and shorts when I go out, because if I get killed or something, or if I die wearing this, that probably wouldn't look good. That was literally the thought that crossed my mind. I'm Louis Cole. Welcome to the Recharged Podcast. In this series, I invite fellow content creators and artists to explore exciting ways to make a difference in the world. I take my guests to visit local social good projects in my self-converted electric 1973 Volkswagen van. We have real and raw conversations about life and hear from social good heroes that we can all be inspired by. On today's podcast, our guest is Chaz Smith, a comedian, filmmaker, and director. Chaz launched his career on Vine eight years ago with a passion to entertain people with a creative, clean, and unique humor. He's now built a social following of over 3 million people and wants to use this platform for positive impact. He's a strong advocate against sexual violence. He believes in authenticity, vulnerability, and that laughter soothes the soul. Oh yeah. I don't know what it is, but when I get in front of cameras, I just like <laughs> spring up. Was there a moment where you decided to follow your own path? And was that a difficult journey? And, and how, do, you, do you feel like you have the approval of your father now with what you're doing? Yeah, I think he was always proud of me. He just didn't express it well. So I didn't, I wasn't able to receive it. So, um, look at this dude. Yes. He got a cowboy hat on. Oh, I love his belt yeah. buckle as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd say that uh, he was always proud of me, like, but I, I, he just never told me directly. He would tell other people like stuff I was doing, how proud he was of me, but I'd always hear it from them, not him. I just wanted to receive it and hear that from him. His, his desires for me were to play basketball and to go into business like he did. Felt like he kind of like guilt tripped me into playing. So I remember the day that I told him that I was sitting in the passenger seat of the car and I just came out and I was like, dad, I don't, uh, I don't want to play basketball anymore. He was like, huh? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't want to play basketball in college. I'm done. I just, I'm just not passionate about it. And then he just like pauses. It's like, huh? Wow. I really felt like he could have made it to the NBA. And that was the first time he'd ever said that to me. Wow. And so in my mind, I'm like, <sighs> I started crying in the car, bro. I looked out the window, tears coming down my face. I was like, that was the type of approval I wanted oh this gosh. entire time. But you tell me this now after I decide I don't want to play anymore. I was just so mad. Praise and affirmation, I think, is so important mm -hmm. for everybody, but especially between, like, for kids from their fathers. There's something about the older generations that haven't had the same understanding of like emotional intelligence and how to communicate yeah. kindness and support because maybe back then, and it's still like that whole tox toxic masculinity thing of like, uh, if you appear soft or you're emotional, then it's feminine. Yeah. The whole idea that emo like expressing yourself is a feminine thing that guys shouldn't deal with. That's why the suicide rate is so much higher for men than it is for women. From an early age, as we're boys, we're thinking like, oh, when we feel pain, when we're hurting, whether physically or emotionally, it's irrelevant. Push through it. Forget about it. Don't, be don't express yourself. And it's like you're shaking up this, this soda bottle and all this pressure is building inside until you finally snap and the cap explodes off. Which is probably why guys struggle more with anger and yeah. kind of violent yeah. behavior or whatever it is. Like there's a lot of yeah. pent up emotional suppression. Right. I feel like suicide rates, depression, anxiety is kind of skyrocketing in this up and coming generation like Gen Z's. Yeah. And how do we harness social media platforms for good and create an environment where it's less toxic. And I sometimes feel like, am I just depressing people? Is this actually inspiring? I literally wrote a caption about that. Yeah, is this inspiring? Yeah. Is this actually influencing people in a good way? Or am I actually depressing people? Yeah. It can easily be an unhealthy way for us to express ourselves because we're looking for affirmation or we think lesser of ourselves than we sh or think lowly of ourselves. So then when we see somebody else who appears to have success, we compare ourselves and think of ourselves worse and it 
And of course, our, we just allow our emotions to sink into these lies. We're arriving now. And I didn't, I deliberately didn't want to give you too much context of what, where we're arriving, but uh, it's this amazing woman called Miri who has set up this like uh, refugee support organization. Yeah, so we're just gonna hang out with her for an hour, kind of hear her story, what she's up to, and maybe help a little bit. Um, get some packages ready for some refugees. Today, we are visiting Miri Whitehall, founder and executive director of Miri's List, a non-profit organization that provides a mechanism for people to directly help new arrival refugee families with the incredible challenge of resettling in the US. Miri's List helps new arrival families connect with caring people, basic necessities, and services that make this process less isolating and less intimidating. Since 2016, Miri's List has supported over 700 families who have come through the Federal Refugee Resettlement Programme from countries including Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq and Iran. The number of forcibly displaced people around the world has skyrocketed since 2010, growing from 41.1 million to 82.4 million as of 2020. The United States has a long proud tradition of giving families fleeing war and persecution a chance to rebuild their lives in safety. The US government will aim to resettle up to 125,000 refugees in the next 12 months, which will mark a 733% increase from the historic low 15,000 person ceiling former President Donald Trump set before leaving office. Although organizations like Miri's List provide an incredible service, on a national level, there needs to be more work done to expand lawful pathways for protection and opportunities. Let's push for better support and services to receive people. Louis, this is Chaz. Hey. Hey. I'd love to hear your story, really. Um, well, Miri's List is a four and a half year old nonprofit organization. We work with families who are resettling in the United States as refugees. So we're helping them to get access to a supportive community system that they can rely on. What got you into this? Like, were you Maybe. always passionate about like refugee resettlement? Not at all. At the time that Miri's List began, my youngest was five months and my oldest was three. So I was very busy with like a newborn and a toddler. And I was introduced to a family who had a baby who was the same age as mine, who had just moved to LA from Syria. And I was introduced to them because my friend who had met them through her church, she was like, oh, you have a baby who's five months. I know somebody else who has a five month old baby. Maybe she can help to you know, provide some of the stuff that they need. And once I was there, I could just kind of look around and I saw that their house was just not set up to be functional for their family. And we walked around the house, opened every cabinet, looked at every shelf and made a list. It was 42 things that they needed to get their home set up to be functional. After I made that list, I didn't go to Target and buy everything myself. Like I was, I was like on a single income at the time with two little kids, like I couldn't afford it. Like I went home, posted on Facebook, the list. My neighbors, friends, family, people that I worked with like 10 years earlier were like showing up at my house with their car full of stuff from Costco. And we were able to get everything on their list donated within a few weeks. And I remember sitting in that family's apartment, we were sitting on the floor, we were eating Cheerios and bananas because what they had in like an Arabic culture, you always serve food and it was, and we had tea of course. And um, I was just looking at this family who literally didn't have a mattress in their baby's crib, but I could see the love and support and functioning and happiness there that I just, I didn't have that in my house. And it had been a long time since I felt that amount of safe and comfort within a family. And so I was just like, I got that fulfilled in a way just being there. And I was like, I wanna do what I can to help. Cause I had a house full of stuff. Like the next thing I did was I drove home and I picked up my spare crib mattress. I went back to their house with that mattress. And I was just like, these folks have solvable problems and I can help them with that. I think it's really amazing as well that even in the position you were in when you started all of this of being a single mom and raising two kids, which I can't even imagine, you know, how difficult that is in the first place that you were still so willing to like give your give yourself and time and effort into like helping other people, you know. I mean, my kids were with me 
doing everything. Like yeah. every time I went to drop off supplies at a family's house, they were with me. And so it's important that we talk to kids about why people move around the world as refugees because this, the resettling kids that arrive here, they end up in our schools like everybody's kids. And so often kids are the first line of welcoming for a resettling eighth grader, for example. So today we are going to pack a welcome kit for the Nazari family from Afghanistan. They got here in November 2019. They are a mom and dad with three kids, a four-year-old, a nine-year-old, and an 11-year-old. They miss Afghanistan and the time that they were spending with their family and friends, um, at, specifically at picnics and having Afghan food. So here's a box, that's for you. And if you could please write on it, welcome Nazari family, and I'll tell you how to spell it. A crooked emoji. <laughs> I like that. Um, all right, so we'll go from the back and we'll work our way forward. Oh, why don't you grab the socks because those will be perfect for the dad. Dad is 48, mom is 39. Stick that in the box. That's perfect. So, this all right, we got nice, some shampoo. Nice shampoo and conditioner. Garnier fruit shampoo tea. Shampoo and conditioner. You know, like this dad that I talked to yesterday who was yeah. like so excited about that welcome kit, he wasn't talking about the stuff that in, it, it was in there. And, and like, he was like very thankful for that. But he was like, we felt so loved when we opened it because like we read all those cards. He said he, he expected his wife to laugh, but she cried just from happiness from after, when he was reading the letters to her. So it's not just the practical help, but it's even the, yeah. the actual thought of like that people are, are supporting you. Almost filled up, I think we can put a bit more in. It's like Tetris. Yeah. Are you having fun? Yes, I like trying to organize. Is it, what is this, toothbrushes? Toothbrushes. Like Miri said, if you're watching and want to donate things, like just simple things like this, then we'll link everything in the description. Having the lists online is really cool. Thank like you. just being able, for people to be able to fulfill them on their own. These are handmade blankets. Wow. That we're gonna squeeze in on top. It's a welcome blanket. And then each one has a note from the person who made it that's for the recipient of it. Oh, that's a nice one, that's beautiful. So look, can you see the tag on it over here? You can just read that. This blanket is a very small gesture to bring you comfort as you build a new life. The US is indeed a country of opportunity. I welcome you to your new home. From Sonia. Oh, Sonia. Yeah, stitch by stitch, huh? It's so heartwarming and encouraging to see like you really just the kindness that you're showing people and that I feel like will ripple out and it's like contagious. People are like, oh my gosh, like this kindness and compassion and supporting other people is so rewarding. I know we are on the right track. Like these are all the signs, all the symbols that we know we're doing the right thing. And when individual people are thriving, that's when we can thrive as a community or as a city, as a country, as a, as a world. It's family to family. Well, thank, thank you for doing what you do. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll link everything. If you want to support and you're watching or listening, like I said, um, we'll link how you can do that. Take Sweet. care, Mary. Nice to meet you. you. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks for coming. I, I forgot to show, show Chaz what's been driving us around. So The battery. Check this out. So this is the motor. So this was a huge engine, right? And now mm -hmm. this, this tiny little motor is what's powering. Did you build all of this? Yeah. <laughs> right, we should head back. Nice. Come on. Right. What did you think of that? That was really nice. Um, she's great. Isn't she's, she? she's doing some awesome work and she just really cares for people, man. What's your perspective as a black man in America? I mean, diving into the race thing, if you're happy to. What do you think are some of the big things that could see a shift so our children, children's generation are living in a more just accepting world where people aren't judged on race? I think three things that kind of all coincide together. Representation, stories and perspectives. We need people who represent, it's just, it's another way of saying just like diverse experiences, diversity, cultures, like being open to knowing, other, knowing what other people's experiences are. Seeing different representations of people in your personal life 
will change your perspective and storytelling is a powerful way to do that. There was a thought that crossed my mind at one point last year where I was like going out to get some food at In-N-Out or something, but I was like, huh, I probably shouldn't wear a tank top and shorts when I go out because if I get killed or something, or if I die wearing this, that probably wouldn't look good. That was literally the thought that crossed my mind. What do you mean it wouldn't look good? Like, like it would just, it, what I mean by it wouldn't look good was I was concerned that if I were to die wearing whatever clothes I had on, that I'd be perpetuate, further perpetuating a stereotype. And that thinking is just so off in the first place. Like, that's not, I don't think that's something that you've ever thought about before. Like, no, never. Let's go again. Just stopped off for some uh, ice to cool the cameras down and, ice cream. and some ice cream. Woo. I feel like we were talking about some really heavy topics before the camera overheated. And it totally slipped my mind. <laughs> ice cream has that effect on me. Mm. And you just forget about everything. Mm. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you've done enough therapy. You've had enough conversations. You've taken enough naps. Maybe you just need some ice cream. Yeah. That's true. I think after visiting Miri and seeing what she does, it was very inspiring and I think there's something we can both relate to is wanting, and it's kind of stuff we've talked about, but wanting to have a bigger impact on the world with our lives. I guess something I want to do with this podcast is kind of provoke these kind of conversations for people that are listening. What does it really look like to do good in the world, to to ha make an a positive impact. Yeah, what would your advice be then for people that want to do good in the world? I say look for needs that need to be filled, particularly stuff that you care about. If you don't know what you care about yet, pay attention to the things that like really like ping your heart or maybe make you angry or frustrated to the point where like, you know, that might be something that you want to make a difference in the stuff that frustrates us, the stuff that hurts us emotionally. I think those are good indicators for, you know, just considering, all right, this is a place that I can serve and help others. If everybody did everything they could do, everybody would be burned out all the time. Yeah. So I say instead of Small doing steps, yeah. steps, instead of doing everything you can, I say just do one thing at a time. This was really good. It's been man. a great chat, man. It's been yeah. good to get to know you. I feel like we, We've become good friends in the last yeah. three hours. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is some deep stuff to sure, start, off with, start off with. Thanks yeah. for sharing. Thanks for being so open and mm -hmm. being vulnerable. And uh, yeah, guys, go and follow Chaz. I'll link him below. Uh, what's your handles for people that? Chaz Smith everywhere. C-H-A-Z-S-M-I-T-H. -H. YouTube, TikTok. Yeah, go and subscribe. Get ready for his story time series. And I'll uh, catch you on the next, next episode. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Chaz and Miri's list. If you enjoyed this video, please go and subscribe to my brand new podcast channel and check out the full length podcast here. There's lots of amazing guests and exciting episodes coming soon.